Hey friend, Chris Vandeviver here from whylogicprorules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Today in our 30-day series, I want to demonstrate to you how you can customize each of the track headers in your project and just really how much value is under the hood when it comes to the track headers. The track headers live to the left of our tracks area and to the right of the library or the inspector. We can see names, icons, different buttons, and there's just so much to unpack here. And really, if you get familiar and comfortable with customizing your track headers, you can really maximize your workflow in Logic. So we're gonna walk through the different buttons, the different functions, so you can get right down to business with the track header section. So first we need to customize the different components in the track header. And you can do this many ways, but we're gonna either right click on the track header, go down to track header components, and these are all the different components or options, or, and I highly recommend, is key command option T, to reveal a menu that's much more inviting to work with. And we can see all sorts of buttons. Some we're probably pretty familiar with, like the mute button, solo, record enable, some others that maybe we're not so familiar with, controls, other view options, so on and so forth. And we're gonna walk through all of this pretty quick. Now I've enabled most of these buttons so we can walk through them. And again, the one that we're probably most familiar with is mute, solo, record enable, but we're just gonna quickly navigate these buttons. The mute button obviously allows us to mute or prevent a track from playing back when we hit play. The solo button allows us to solo a track specifically. So if we just wanna hear the bass or just the guitar or a couple of tracks all soloed, but not everything in the session, the solo button enables that. And then we have the record enable button, which allows us to say to Logic, hey, I plan on recording to this track, whether it's software instrument or audio, be prepared to capture the audio from this track. But there's a handful of ways that you can get even more out of these various buttons. First of all, you can swipe right through the mute buttons and solo buttons as if you were just sliding your finger down the screen. If we click and then just slide down, perfect. Or the solo button, same thing. And you can do the same thing within the mixer. So sliding across the mute buttons, sliding across the solos, very handy. Additionally, if we make a selection such as clicking this top track, and then either using shift to select an entire selection or row of tracks or command clicking to select tracks that aren't necessarily next to each other, we can mute these tracks or solo them as a bunch. We can also mute every track in the session or solo every track in the session or vice versa by command clicking these different buttons. So if we command click the mute button, we've muted everything in the project. Command click again to unmute command click to solo everything, which seems self-defeating, or command clicking to unsolo. And let's say we have this track right here, a couple tracks that are muted. We can command click to unmute these muted tracks or vice versa. The same goes for solo buttons. So if we command click a solo button that's highlighted, we've turned all of the solo tracks off. And same thing, boom. We can also kind of invert muted or soloed selections. So if I have these tracks muted, and then option click the mute button right here on the synth, we've now unmuted the three other tracks and muted our synth. And again, the same goes for soloing. So option click a solo button to solo the synth and unsolo the once were solo tracks. But also you can control click on a solo button to set that track to a solo safe state, which means that no matter what tracks are soloed in the session, this track will always play back. So we're gonna do this with an audio track. I'm gonna solo safe it and solo these tracks and you can see that my guitar is still soloed even though I didn't solo it at all. This works really well for things like reverbs or delays, auxiliary channel strips that maybe you don't want to be muted as you're soloing around your project. You just wanna make sure that they're always going to be playing back. You can control click these and now they'll always be audible in your sessions. Another button that you might be familiar with is the input monitoring button, which allows us to hear an audio track, even if it's not record enabled and recording. So if you wanna test drive and make sure that you have audio signal passing through this channel strip, turn on the input monitoring button, just make sure that software monitoring is enabled as well. And then you can play along with the song, even if you're not recording. From there, we have the power button, which for a long time was just kind of a glorified mute button. If we press the power button off, you'd think that this track has been turned off. But in fact, the region is just muted 
And if there's no other channel strips being sent to this channel strip, then yeah, some of the processing is not being used because there's no audio or MIDI information passing through this channel strip. But the plugins, the instruments are still active. But thanks to one of the recent updates with dynamic plugin loading, if we now option click the power button, we can now completely offload all processing, all instruments on this channel strip. And we've muted the channel strip as well. Really helpful if you don't wanna delete a track, but you need to offload some stuff just because you're running into CPU overloads. Really helpful. And that brings us to freeze. The freeze button allows us to basically bounce our tracks in place without creating new tracks and new regions. The freeze button comes in two varieties, either source only or pre-fader. And when we enable freeze, Logic will essentially bounce the track in place. And once the process is done, you hit playback and Logic only refers to the freezed file instead of the original audio on the track or the original information on the track. And it's really simple. You just press a freeze button, press play, and then Logic goes through the process of freezing this track. So now it's freezing. I'm gonna use command period to eject myself from the dialogue. And that's a really helpful tip. If you ever find you're in a dialogue like exporting or bouncing, it's taking too long and you want to eject out of it, command period to get out of that process. But once completed, now Logic will just refer to that freeze file until you unfreeze the track. But it's worth noting that there are two frozen states. Here we have a blue freeze button, which implies source only. And you can see that in the track inspector here. And source only means that we can't actually touch the region here. So we can't do anything with that region. We also can't do anything with the instrument. So I've opened the instrument, but I can't impact anything in it. But we have free reign to change our plugins and load new plugins and work with the processing before the fader. With pre-fader, we don't have access to the instrument, the region, or the plugins either. So if you have some pretty intense plugins on your channel strip, this might be the way to go for offloading that processing. And this can dramatically reduce the occurrence of system overload messages. Then we have the protect button. And the protect button protects us from ourselves. If you want to make sure that you don't accidentally move a region around or edit a region or anything else, this is the button you would press. And if you command click, you would think it would protect all of the tracks, but I found that you have to select the bottom most track to protect everything. Otherwise you get this weird inverted action. So just keep that in mind when it comes to protecting. If I select all the regions in my session and try to move them, I can't. Or if I try to split these regions with the playhead, so command T, Again, I can't make any sort of edit. I can't move regions around. It's ensuring that I don't accidentally do something that I'm gonna later regret. Cool, so we've now cycled through all the buttons very quickly, but it's very important because there's so much here that can really help you out when you're in a pinch. From here, we have controls like volume and pan. Very self-explanatory. I don't usually include volume on my track headers. And you can see that if you don't have a volume slider, then it's just replaced by a little light that indicates that audio is passing through that track. The pan knob can also be included. We're a little too far out to see it, but if I zoom in here, we can see the pan knob, which allows us to pan this track left to right or balance it. But we can also right click on it and change the pan control to ascend. So we change this to send one. I don't actually have a send on this track, but I have it right here. So just like the send knob here, we can adjust the send. And if we option T, we can actually choose. Do we want these pan knobs to be panning or specific sends that we want to adjust from the tracks area? From here, we have the option for additional name column. So we can actually introduce some extra name information. We can set this to automatic. So Logic just determines what it is that we wanna see, or we can choose patch or channel strip setting name, software instrument setting name. So it's specific to the instrument itself, channel strip name, or type and number. Personally, I don't really find a lot of use in this, but I'm sure some do. And from here, we have the other view options. And these I find very helpful. We can either include track numbers, so the number track in your session. You can see that it's being collapsed if I remove it. We also have control surface bars. Now, let me just enable Logic Remote on my iPad so we can see these control surface bars pop up. So now we know if we kind of crush down the view, we can see that Logic Remote on iPad is currently focused on these eight tracks, which is super helpful. So if you have multiple controllers, you'll see different colors for different controllers. So you know which controller is pointed to what channel strip. From here, we can also include color bars, which I find incredibly helpful for navigating my session. 
I'm very keen on color coding. And we can see that there are colors for each channel strip, and I like them to be reflected in the tracks as well. We can also include a groove track, which this I feel like a lot of people don't know about. We'll get to that. We can include track icons, which again, I find helpful, much easier than reading each name of each track. Track alternatives, which we won't dig into, but I have a whole video just recent that I'll include as a link in this video. And now let's dig into groove tracks. Groove tracks is kind of like a variation on smart tempo or flex time. I have a bass track here. And if I hover my mouse over here, I can actually set this track to be the groove track. And you'll know that it's a groove track when you see the star and you click on it. And now we see this view with star and a bunch of other circles for each other track. And what the groove track does is that we tell Logic, hey, we want all the other instruments to essentially follow the timing and performance of this one instrument. And to set the other tracks to match the performance, at this point, we just select our tracks and we click right here. And now we've enabled these tracks to follow the performance. So this track's frozen. I'm just going to leave it alone. And we're going to solo these tracks. And check it out. I'm actually going to open the piano roll for this just so we can see what's going on here. If I disable the follow groove track, you can see my MIDI notes are shifting around a little bit. Cool, and now it's gonna follow more tightly to this bass track that I recorded with a bass guitar. Instead of following their own tempo that I programmed them at. So very helpful if you want tracks to follow along, but you don't want to dig into smart tempo necessarily, or even flex time to finesse the timing of these instruments. And from here, we're just left with if we want to save our own user default for the track headers. So I'm going to customize this a little bit. I'm going to include most of this, but not that, not even the pan knob, not interested. And track numbers, I don't care. And I'll keep most of everything else. And now if we go to this gear, we can store this as a user default. And so no matter what project that we're in, we can load up our user default for the track headers. So if I switch things around now, we can now apply my user default that I saved. Cool, or we can revert back to the factory default. So revert back, apply the user default, boom. So that was a ton of information. I try to fly through it as quick as I could, but the track headers just, again, have so much under the hood and a lot of functionality that can help you out. Especially, I love the on off power button. If you option click, that's a huge, huge help if you need to offload tracks completely. And that's thanks to a recent update with dynamic plugin loading. So I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly recommend subscribing to the YouTube channel, YLogic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, YLogicProRules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, new emails, and posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Thanks so much.